For two years now, the world has been without electricity and water. Money has turned into waste paper, a bottle of water costs two and a half thousand dollars, and millionaires are selling their luxury watches and cars to buy some rice. The story begins in contemporary Tokyo. The Suzuki family lives in a high-rise building and cannot imagine life without gadgets and electrical appliances. The head of the family named Yoshiyuki is an office worker who likes to relax after work in front of the TV. His wife named Mitsu is afraid to butcher the live fish that her father sent her from the village. The family is not accustomed to such food. Their daughter, Yui, spends a lot of time texting with her friends, and their son, Kenji, is constantly listening to music on headphones. Mitsu asks her husband to take a break from the TV and talk to the children, because they spend all their time on the phones and computers and do not live in real life. But instead, a tired Yoshiyuki goes to sleep. The next morning, the man wakes up and cannot understand what time it is. His alarm clock was out of order, as was every clock in the house. The whole apartment has no electricity, the food in the refrigerator has deteriorated. Children are horrified to realize that their gadgets do not work. Nevertheless, all family members gather for their own business. The elevator in the house does not work, so they have to go down the stairs. Yoshiyuki wants to take the subway to work, but there are no trains. Cars and buses also broke down, but no one knows why. Bicycles are now the only means of transportation available to people. Neighbors tell Mitsu that this is the first power outage in 20 years. Rumor has it that the entire area is de-energized, so the women decide to stock up on candles and food. Yoshiyuki comes to work on foot. Here too there is no light, so not a single computer turns on. The entire building is de-energized. Yui's school and Kenji University have the same situation. Mitsu comes to the supermarket. She picks up a cart full of candles and water and gets in a huge line at the checkout. It is impossible to pay by card here, and not a single ATM works. Yoshiyuki's colleagues have been hoping all day that the light will come soon, as they are completely helpless without electricity. On the way home, Yoshiyuki decides to buy a bicycle just in case. In the evening, the family dine by candlelight. They can't wash properly before going to bed because the water pump doesn't work without electricity. Luckily, Mitsu managed to get a full bath of water. The woman goes out onto the balcony and admires the stars, which are visible this night better than ever. Soon the whole family joins her. They had never looked at the sky together before. The morning of the third day comes without electricity. Mitsu has to wash clothes with her hands in a basin. Yoshiyuki's chief asks all employees to stay at home until power is restored. He believes that now the most important thing is to survive. Yoshiyuki doesn't believe it's dangerous to stay in Tokyo. He asks the chief for additional explanations and runs out into the street after him. The boss has already gathered his family and goes with them in search of drinking water. Mitsu arrives at the pumping station with empty bottles. A large crowd has gathered here. Workers go out to people and report that there is no more water. Swearing and panic begin. Meanwhile, Yoshiyuki drives up to the bank for cash. People push in a huge queue and behave aggressively. Yoshiyuki is kicked in the nose and runs out of the crowd and tries to stop the bleeding. On the seventh day, supermarket shelves are empty. Children stop going to school. A meeting of tenants is held outside the Suzuki family's house. People do not understand what is happening in the world and whether electricity is supplied to other cities. One neighbor believes that if food and water supplies are not replenished, then Tokyo will soon die out. However, others decide that they need to wait another month without leaving their apartments, because the marauders are just waiting for this. Most of the neighbors treat those who run away from Tokyo with contempt. Soon, the elderly neighbor of the Suzuki family dies. This impresses the heroes, and they decide to temporarily move to the village of Kagoshima to Mitsu's father. Yoshiyuki decides that they will get to the nearest airport on bicycles and then fly by plane, because the path is not short. Yui does not want to go to such a wilderness, but she has to obey her father. The girl packs a lot of clothes with her, and her brother packs all his gadgets in the hope that they will come in handy. Family members pile all the cash they have on the dinner table but are not sure if it will be enough to buy plane tickets. However, Mitsu brings a large bundle of bills, which she prudently put aside for a rainy day. Early in the morning, the family quietly leaves the house. They try not to attract the attention of neighbors. Yoshiyuki reproaches his daughter for being unfit for life, while the girl believes that her father is the most unfit among them. The family only has three bikes, but they somehow manage to fit in and hit the road. Mitsu says that the children lack their father's attention, and hopes that Yoshiyuki will be able to make up for everything during the trip. The family stocks up on water at a huge price, 2,500 yen per bottle. They sit down to have lunch and see a man fishing on the lake. This process triggers Yui's gag reflex. Soon the family arrives at the airport, but the plane 
planes do not fly, and the police drive people away from the fence. An angry mob attacks the police, some people try to climb over the fence. Suzuki understand that they have nothing to do here, and rush to get away. The family stays overnight at a hotel. At dinner, Yui suggests returning home, but the father says that they will go to Kagoshima on bicycles. The girl screams, cries and refuses to go. Mitsu also does not believe that they will manage to get on bicycles to the other end of the country. But there is nothing to do. Now the family needs another bike, as well as a map, water and food. In the morning, Kenji and Yui get a children's map from a nearby supermarket and realize that Kagoshima is over a month away. Meanwhile, their parents notice that the local rice vendor has a bicycle. She only exchanges rice for water or food. So, the Suzuki couple barter water and two bottles of wine from a saleswoman for a bicycle and a sack of rice. By evening, the family arrives in a new city. There is no electricity here either. Suzuki decide to spend the night near the walls of a closed museum. Kenji wakes up in the middle of the night and notices a man stealing a bottle of water from his bag. The guy immediately rushes after the thief. But, having overtaken him, he sees that the water was needed for a small child. Kenji returns to his family with nothing. In the morning, the family drives up to a long dark tunnel. Blind old women sit at the entrance to it and offer to lead travelers through the tunnel for a bottle of water. The Suzuki refuse the offer, but stumble upon abandoned cars and dead animals in the tunnel. Feeling disgusted, they return and turn to the old women for help. On the 16th day, the family stops by the river. They are almost out of matches and have no more water supplies. Yoshiyuki then decides to drink water straight from the river, even though the others ask him not to. Later that day, the family is caught in a rainstorm. They leave their bikes on the track and run to hide under the bridge. The bikes are blown away by a gust of wind, and Yoshiyuki has a bout of diarrhea. After the rain, the family collects their damaged and battered things. Kenji's bike has a punctured wheel, Mitsu's glasses are shattered, a bag of rice is torn, and Yoshiyuki is becoming completely ill from river water poisoning. After that, the children go to the nearest supermarket. They get distilled water, canned cat food, glue for the tear, and a flare. Meanwhile, Yoshiyuki comes to his senses and unsuccessfully tries to make fire with friction. Yui tastes the canned food and spits it out in disgust. However, on the 22nd day, the family already happily dine on cat food. Soon they meet another family on the track. These people are much more adapted to survival. They laugh, play cards, drink tea and eat dried fish. The friendly family explains to Suzuki that water can be taken from mountain streams. Fish need to be treated with smoke, and some plants can also be eaten. One of the boys takes pictures of the exhausted Suzuki with a film camera and promises to send them a photo. Only Yoshiyuki is not happy with new acquaintances. The family soon part. The Suzuki go to a big city in the hope that there is electricity there. On the 43rd day, the family reaches the goal, but there is no light here either. Yui is the first to break down and reproaches her father for all the troubles. Kenji and Mitsu follow suit. Helpless, Yoshiyuki sits on the ground. After some time, the family drives up to the aquarium. Workers caught all its inhabitants and are ready to feed those who wish. Suzuki stand in a long line for food, but they get nothing. Yoshiyuki falls to his knees and begs to at least feed the children, but there really is no more food. On the 67th day, the family arrives at a distant village. They make a stop and spot a pig in the middle of a field. The Suzuki immediately start chasing, and after several failed attempts, Yoshiyuki manages to kill the pig, but no one knows how to butcher it. Just then, an elderly farmer named Takanasan approaches them and finishes off the pig himself. After that, he brings the family to his house. Here Suzuki can finally drink. The man explains that the pigs have run away from the farm and asks Suzuki to help catch them. For this, he will allow them to stay in his house. The unfortunate family agrees to everything. Takanasan feeds them a hearty meal. Yui eats pork and cries from hunger. Afterwards the family in disgust helps the farmer butcher the pig. But soon they get used to it, and things go smoothly. Suzuki work all day, and in the evening they finally bathe in the bath. Experience indescribable pleasure. Takanasan gives them clean clothes and settles in for the night. At night, Mitsu takes her husband by the hand, which means that she is ready to forgive him all the old grievances. A week later, Suzuki already feel confident in the village. They help Takanasan in everything, and he invites the family to stay with him for good. However, Suzuki realizes that Mitsu's father is waiting for them which means they need to move on to Kagoshima. Takanasan gives them plenty of meat for the journey, and the family sets off. Relations between family members become much warmer. Three days later they come to a river that has no bridge. But Yoshiyuki does not despair and begins to collect a raft from logs on the shore. The others help him. When the raft is ready, the family goes to the other side. A heavy downpour begins. Yui and her mother are crossing to the opposite bank, and the men have to make one more trip to deliver the bicycles. But the raft is falling apart and the bikes are sinking, trying to save at least something. Yoshiyuki he disappears from sight. When the rain stops, Kenji finds the wreckage of the raft in his father's wig. Everyone understands that Yoshiyuki is dead. The 94th day is coming. The surviving Suzuki follow the tracks towards Kagashira. Mitsu falls behind the children and mourns her husband. She even refuses food. 
Yui is eating pork and notices a stray dog. She treats the animal with meat, and soon the family is overtaken by a whole flock of hungry stray dogs. They attack Mitsu's backpack with a roar. The woman tries to fight back, but stumbles and rolls down the slope. Children rush to help their mother and see that she has broken her leg. Overcoming the pain, Mitsu tries to move on, but the pack of dogs again comes at the family with a hungry roar. Suzuki understand that they are about to be eaten, and from helplessness they sit right on the rails. But then the whistle of a locomotive is heard nearby. The train scares the dogs away and stops right in front of Suzuki. Then the family continues continues their journey with the breeze. The train has water, food, and even a doctor who puts a cast on Mitsu's leg. Everything is getting better, but, remembering their father, the children cry inconsolably. Meanwhile, Yoshiyuki wakes up on the river bank. He himself does not understand how he survived. The exhausted man manages to get to the field next to the railroad. He is sitting, leaning on the tractor, when he suddenly hears the sound of the wheels of a steam locomotive. Yoshiyuki doesn't have the strength to jump to his feet and get attention. Then he remembers the signal flare that he had in his pocket all this time. The man lights the rocket and the family spots him from the train window. Suzuki asks to urgently stop the train and run to their father. Now the whole family is together. Yoshiyuki throws away his wig and decides to start a new life. His family becomes more friendly and perceives all troubles with laughter. On the 108th day, the Suzuki finally arrive at the coastal village of Kagoshima. Here they are happily greeted by Mitsu's father. After 2 years and 126 days, the men have already learned how to fish like avid fishermen. Yui becomes a wonderful seamstress, and Mitsu helps her father grow tomatoes. Suzuki Suzuki live happily without frills. Early in the morning, Yoshiyuki wakes up to strange sounds. He goes into the pantry with old things and finds a clock on which the alarm went off. Immediately, the radio starts to work, and the lights are lit. Suzuki can't believe their eyes. Some time later, the family returns to Tokyo. Life is buzzing here. Presenters from the screens broadcast that two and a half years ago, for an unknown reason, there was a global power outage across the planet. Under this transmission, Yui is going to a sewing circle, and Mitsu is preparing soup with meatballs and fried fish. Suzuki found a balance between the benefits of civilization and the useful simple joys of life. When the whole family gathers on the threshold of the house, the postman brings them the photograph taken with a film camera. In the photo, Suzuki stands hungry and shabby in the middle of the highway on the way to Kagoshima. 